Today we'll talk about my least expected upgrades of my new workstation. These are two enterprise SSDs. This is not something I expected to get at all, but during my visit in China I got in contact with Memblaze, the maker of these SSDs, and I was sent two of the SSDs to test out, so a big thank you to them to allow me to test all of these things and share all of the information with you. This video will primarily go into the PBlaze 7, that is their PCIe Gen 5 8TB SSD, and it's blazing fast. I also got their PBlaze 6 6530, that is their previous generation Gen 4 uh, SSD, and that will be probably primarily used on my uh, NAS, so my uh, home server, as a caching drive or maybe to run some virtual machines. But the main focus will today be on the PBlay 7, as that is the one I have been testing in my main station at full Gen 5 speeds for the last month or so. And let me tell you, it has been a journey, but it was really great to work with some enterprise hardware, since that's a first for me. So again, I have run some enterprise tests on this as well, also some consumer tests since I am a prosumer, I use my desktop for game development, regular development, video editing, just regular browsing and a lot more. So if you have any tests you want to see, also let me know in the comments below so I can test it out in the future and maybe make a great update. So there are some changes from going from a consumer SSD like the 990 Pro in my system to an enterprise SSD. First of all, this might look like a SATA SSD, but that's not the case. These are U.2 and this is an interface which does use PCIe. So just like your M.2 SSD, it can run at PCIe Gen 4 or 5, depending on the drive, and give you plenty of speeds, up to 14 gigabytes per second. But because this is U.2, I did have to get a M.2 to U.2 adapter, and this was sent to me by DLock. They do say it is at Gen 4 on their website and on the box, but this actually runs at Gen 5 out of the box, um, so that's great. Just keep in mind on some motherboards like my Asus ROG, you have to do a full extended security check on the drive itself in order to get full PC Gen 5 speeds. So definitely keep that in mind, you might have to check your BIOS to go through this full support to get the maximum speeds. Don't worry, this is also tested on an official adapter, so there's an adapter directly on the main PCIe slot, and that was used to test if this uh, adapter works. And it might be around 2-3% to slower to run an adapter, but being able to place this wherever in your case is really worth it. Especially since this stick needs a lot of cooling. This can use up to 25 watts, which is a lot of wattage to dissipate. That's also why you can't just put these in any place. The old SATA SSDs you could put them wherever, up on the back of the motherboard, and it was fine since it didn't run hot. These can run hot, so they basically need to direct airflow, and they need direct airflow across the whole SSD. So I got a very professional setup ready with cardboard, and this allowed me to do all the testing. In the future I will 3D print a setup so I can directly attach the SSD to my fan, and maybe I will even make a dual slot so I can put two of these SSDs in there. Talking about speeds, that's the biggest factor of these enterprise SSDs. They are consistent. The Speeds, which are consistent, are 14 gigabytes uh, read and 10 gigabytes write. And this can keep going as long as you want it to, which is insane to think about. That's so much data. And then you also have the peak performance, which is, well, still 14 gigabytes per second read, since that's the max of PCIe Gen 5. But it can run at 12 gigabytes per second write for the first duration, which is great to have that extra peak performance. But again, 10 gigabytes per second is already so much. For the random read and write, it is also very high, it is 2.8 million IOPS read and 500k IOPS write. So write is a bit lower, but luckily again write does peak as well. So during the initial period, when you write to this drive with random writes, it will perform up to 900k IOPS, which is still very high. So it is good to see that it does have some extra buffer to get the best performance out of this. And now when you compare this to a consumer SSD, like the 990 Pro or the recently released Gen 5 SSDs from Samsung, WD and all the other companies, you might see that the performance is similar or they might even be higher performance, but it's only speak performance. So when you write to it for just a minute or so, it will be at that insane performance and that's great. But when you're doing any consistent runs, 
it will really drop down. These PCIe Gen 5 consumer SSDs will drop down to just 1.3 gigabytes per second, which is way lower than the 14 gigabytes per second on this one, which it can just pump out consistently. So that's something to really keep in mind. If you're just playing games, of course, you're not going to use an enterprise SSD. Um, you can, of course, it, not stopping you, but you won't notice any benefits from it, except maybe the right endurance. Uh, but in general, you're not going to be needing these for anything just gaming related. Where these shine are more prosumer tasks, next to, of course, data centers. Um, but once you're running video editing, so you're running 8K or 4K raw footage, these might be interesting. Also, if you use a lot of virtual machines, which might work at the same time, or if you're running a home server, these also might be great to just get a consistent performance so everything feels snappy, whatever you throw at it. And that's where this one shines. Like if you're editing videos, you might actually start noticing the difference in this. Luckily, the speed isn't the only thing that is important for these drives. You also have the endurance. You can write a full drive to this per day for the full lifetime warranty and it will just keep working. That is an insane amount of data. And if you use this as a prosumer, it will probably outlast your lifetime. So you can just keep using it for how long you want. So definitely keep that in mind, these keep going forever and they're probably three to four times longer lasting than regular consumer SSDs, maybe even more. I don't have the exact numbers on this. You can even write this to a different namespace. So you can go from eight terabytes to 6.4 terabytes. And you can also purchase them in that namespace. So that's really nice. And this boosts the random read and write. So that's already a bonus. And you can write to the drive three times per day for the entire warranty. So that's a three times improvement over the already great lifetime endurance. So you're not going to kill these at all unless you're running them in a 24 seven server in rate, whatever. Um, these are going to outlast you. And it's also something why these are maybe interesting to consumers as well, if you're a prosumer is that you can get these used for a decent price sometimes. For example, I got the PBlaze 6 used and it has been performing great for me. I didn't notice it at all. It does have a small scratch here, but next to that, the performance is great and I can just probably keep using this for years and years to come, even while it already got a few years under its belt. So definitely don't forget that these just keep going, which also makes them very interesting on the used market since a lot of used parts are sold secondhand. Now then, the real kicker is, of course, pricing. Should you purchase any of these drives yourself? If they're new, it can be a tough pill to swallow. Well, I don't have exact pricing from Memblaze. They say to contact them directly if you're interested in purchasing them, so their email address will be linked below. Um, they don't have any direct pricing information. I did look up some websites where you can actually purchase similar drives, and this is between 1600 and 2000 euros per 8 terabytes Gen 5 drive. So that is a premium over the regular drives. But again, the endurance and performance both outweighs that if you actually use it. So if you do need that performance, these are going to run at the speed you need them to for however long you want. And that's from going to from 1.2 gigabytes per second to 10 gigabytes per second it is going to outclass that price difference if you're really using these drives to their full potential. So should you be using these enterprise SSDs? It really depends on your use case, but honestly, for me in my professional workstation with all the workloads I throw at it, I can honestly see myself using this on the regular basis. So this will be in a testing system right now. So if you have any new tests you want me to run, just drop them in the comments and I will try to give you the best information I can, or maybe make some follow-up videos. So definitely let me know if there are any questions. Also, if you'd like this overview and review, definitely let me know as well by dropping a like. And I hope I can see you in the next video.